Today I want to show you something that I do from time to time that helps me gain control of the paint when I'm painting on wet paper. I painted a Vizsla this week. I hope that's how you pronounce it. I looked it up and listened to some Hungarians and I think that's how they said it. Uh, Vizsla. I'm going to use this painting to show you my palette tip. Most of the work on my paintings is done on wet paper. Areas of each painting might be painted on dry paper, but the bulk of it is painted on wet paper. Sometimes beginners will find it hard to control the paint on wet paper because it might be too wet when they put it on the paper. So today I've got a palette tip that might help you. It certainly helped me when I was painting this Vishla. With this painting, I worked on wet paper for almost the entire painting. I wet it and dried it, wet it and dried it all the way through the painting. What I varied was the consistency of the paint. At the start of the painting, the paint is fairly watery while I paint in those initial washes. But as I start to build up the painting and paint all the details, the paint is less fluid and I don't need a lot of it. So that's what I want to show you in this video. Once again, I did a graphite study and a color study before I began the main painting. The graphite study allowed me to simplify the reference photo into tonal shapes and it gave me a chance to look closely at the structure of the dog's face. From there, I did my color study, which not only helped me work out my colors, but also my techniques, and it allowed me to see what the painting was going to look like when it was finished. Both studies allowed me to start the main painting with confidence. This painting is painted on Arsh cold pressed watercolor paper. I stretched it before I used it, and I used a limited palette of transparent and semi-transparent watercolor pigments by Windsor & Newton. I've listed the colors in the description. The reference photo I used for this painting was taken by Peter Goblios. I hope that's how you pronounce his name. And I downloaded it from Pixabay. I was attracted to the pose of the dog more than anything else. I loved the tilt of the head. And I also loved the lighting and the way that dark shadow runs down the left hand side. The first thing I did was paint a light wash of burnt sienna and winds of violet onto the background. I wet the entire paper so that some of that colour would creep onto the dog. Then I dried it with my hairdryer. Now I'm in the process of putting some more water on the paper. This time I want the paint to go onto the dog, but I also want it to creep off onto the background. I've just carefully painted around the eyes with water, so I haven't put any water on the eyes, but I'm going to put water everywhere else. What I have to do is be careful not to wash off that wash that I've just put on the background. I don't really want to disturb it if I can help it. I dried it with my hairdryer, as I said, so that hopefully when I run this water over the top, I'm not going to disturb it too much. So that's the dog covered. And now I carefully paint the water onto the background. What I want to do is put the paint on the dog and then I want to lift the board off my table so that the paint will drift into the background as well. Okay, here I've got Windsor Violet. I paint it onto the dog and I push it off onto the background as well. Lift my board off the table so that it's on a slope. Then I start in with the burnt sienna. I don't want the paint to be too dark, but I want to give it fairly good coverage if I can. Here's my paint here. I take the burnt sienna and I mix it with some water on my palette. And I make sure that all of the pigment is dissolved. I want watery paint, but I want it to have a bit of color. And this color will be the lightest color that you see on the dock. 
So this will be my underwash and I'll work over the top of this building up the detail. So I've worked that all the way down to the bottom now. And now I've got a bit more paint and I'm pushing it off onto the background. Both Burnt Sienna and Windsor Violet are transparent pigments and I'll be using both of those colours on the dog. That's dry now and you can see it always dries lighter. So that's my underwash and now I can start working over the top of that. Here's the palette tip that I talked about at the start of the video. I'm cleaning off that watery paint that I used to paint in the background and that underwash on the dock. Onto this dry palette, hopefully it's dry, although I think I might have a bit of water up in the corner there. Let's see if I can sop it up. So onto this palette, I paint my colours that I'm going to be using on the dock. So I use fairly creamy pigment straight out of the tube and I spread it out over the palette, nice and thick. I washed my brush out and I dried it off. Now I'm painting on the next pigment that I'll use. This is Windsor & Newton's Van Dyke Brown. I put it on the palette thick and dark and spread it out. This one here is Windsor Violet. Same thing, I put it on the palette nice and thick and dark and I spread it out. These wet puddles of paint are now dry. I used the hair dryer to dry them quickly so that I could start painting. So now I'll show you why I found it useful to do this with this painting. I finished painting in the left ear. Now I want to get some colour onto the top of the head. So I'm wetting the head with some water. I'm painting the water on the paper because when I put the paint on here, I want my paint edges to be soft. I don't want any hard paint lines here. Once I've got the water on the paper, I'll switch down to my smaller brush and I'll pick up some of the dry burnt sienna with my damp brush. When I say damp, it's not dripping wet. It's just got a little bit of moisture in it, enough to pick the paint up off the palette. And then I paint that onto the wet paper. As I said, I haven't flooded my brush with wet pigment. The pigment was dry when I picked it up. The paper's wet, my brush is damp, and there's no extra water in the pigment. So that gives me more control of the paint. When I put it on the paper, it tends to sit where I put it, which is what I want. I want the paint to come down into a little triangular shape in the middle of the head. I don't want it to spread too far. I just want it to sit where I put it. And you can see that's what it's doing. I'll leave that to dry so I'll move down here where I'm not going to disturb that area and I'll wet the side of the snout with some water. Again I want soft paint edges down here so that's why I'm wetting the paper. So now I'll pick up some of my burnt sienna paint from my palette. I'll pick it up in an area where it's not wet so I'll avoid that area where I picked it up before. I'll give the brush a quick roll to get the point back and then I'll paint that onto the wet paper where I want it. So the paint's a bit thicker because there's no water mixed into it. The only water is on the paper and the little bit of water that's in my brush. So when I put it on the paper, it sits more or less where I put it. It's not floating everywhere. Now I want some more burnt sienna, but it doesn't have to be quite so thick. I don't mind if it spreads a little bit further this time. So I can pick this up where I've wet it, in this wet spot just here. And then I'll paint that on next to the nose. So here I don't mind if it bleeds a little bit further. It was wetter where I picked it up on the palette, so it's going to move a little bit further. It's also going to be a bit lighter in colour. That has dried now, so I'm going to re-wet it with some water and I'm going to put the darker Van Dyke brown over the top. But you'll still see some of this burnt sienna showing through. I'm not going to completely cover it with the Van Dyke brown. 
So you can see my underwash showing, you'll see the burnt sienna showing, and then you'll see the Van Dyke brown over the top. I'll make sure my brush isn't too wet when I pick the paint up, it just needs to be damp. I'll pick it up in a dry spot and I'll give my brush a little twirl to get the point back. And then I'll use that on this darkest area right down here on the left hand side. So you can see the paint isn't moving much, it's sitting where I put it. But because there's water on the paper it's going to give me soft paint edges. I don't want to completely cover the burnt sienna otherwise there was no point in putting it on there. You can still see it on the edge of that dark mark. And I have more control of my paint because the mixture was dry when I picked it up. There's no excess moisture. I'll get some more paint now. And then I'll paint that over here where I put the burnt sienna before. Don't need a lot of paint here. The water on the paper is giving me those soft edges. Okay, so now I've got the three colours there. I've got the light underwash showing, I've got the burnt sienna showing, and now I've got my darkest colour that I want. All without losing control of the paint. I painted all those other marks on the dog's face the same way. I wet the paper with water and then I picked up the burnt sienna from the dry palette, I'll call it. Here I'm wetting the side of the head and neck with some water. Again, because I want my paint edges to be soft. I want to paint in this darker area on the side of the face and I want to include that even darker hollow that you can see that runs down underneath the eye. I'll use my burnt sienna from the dry area. I'll start with that. And I'll paint that onto this area on the side of the face where I see it's darker on the reference photo. So all over here. I've only loaded the brush once, I haven't picked it up again. So a little bit goes a long way. It's more or less sitting where I put it, but it's giving me soft edges all the way around. Now I'll get some of the Van Dyke Brown and I'll paint that into the hollow that runs under here. So I won't wait for the burnt sienna paint to dry, I'll keep moving on it while it's wet. I'm looking at the reference photo and I think it sits about here. So again you can see the paint is sitting more or less where I put it. it gives me those soft edges but it's not spreading all over the place. I've got control of the paint. If I find I'm not putting it on dark enough, I can pick up a bit more pigment and put it over the top. Or I could wait till it dries and I could give it a second layer. I did a bit more work on the side of the face and here I'm painting some water onto this ear on the right hand side. So the colours that are on there are that first underwash that I did. Now I'll use my smaller brush and I'll pick up some burnt sienna from my dry puddle. And I'll paint that onto the ear where I see the darker colours. I establish the shape first and then I can come back over the top with some more pigment once I get it where I want it. I need some more paint now, so I'll pick it up in a different spot where it's dry. And I'll keep going. Looking at the reference photo as I paint. That little bit of paint goes a fair way as well. When I can see I'm starting to run out of my dry paint, I'll put some more out. This is the thick pigment. I'm just putting it on the plate and spreading it out. That will dry fairly quickly for me. So here on my brush I've got some of that residue pigment that I just put on the plate. You can see it's fairly dark. 
creamy, virtually straight out of the tube. All I did was squish it into the bristles. Now I might spread that out a bit. And then I keep doing the same thing all the way over the dog. So I've wet all of the neck area. I've picked up some of the Van Dyke brown from the dry area. And I paint that over the wet paper. And you can see because it's a little bit thicker than what it would be if I had mixed some water with the paint. It sits where I put it. It spreads a little bit because of the water on the paper but other than that it's doing what I want it to do it's not spreading too far I quite like what I've done there so what I'm going to do is dry that area off with my hair dryer and then I can come back and darken it over the top if I need to and I decided I needed to so I got out some dark sticky pigment I spread it over my plate and then I put a tiny bit of water into it just to make it come off my brush when I put it on the paper. I've re-wet this with water. I dried it with the hairdryer first to preserve the paint that I put there and now I've got this really thick dark pigment and that's going onto the wet paper. I was attracted to this dark shadow when I looked at the reference photo so I wanted to make sure I included it on my painting. I tend to sneak up on my darks, I don't like to go too dark too quickly. I prefer to do it gradually. And I painted like that until I finished the painting. I spread the pigment out on the dry palette and I used my damp brush to pick up the paint. And doing that really helped me to paint this dog with minimal fuss. The paint behaved for me all the way through the painting. This might not suit your style of painting, but when you are wanting to paint detail and you're having trouble controlling the pigment on the wet paper, Give it a try and maybe it will help. I'm going to make a full length tutorial of this painting for my Patreon site and I will publish it as soon as I get it finished. Thanks for watching. Make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next week with another tutorial. Let's hope. So today I've got a palette tip that might help you. It certainly helped me when I was painting this Bishla. Cocky. Most of the work on my paintings is done on wet paper. Areas of each Sometimes beginners will find it hard to control the paint on wet paper because they might be using paint. Sometimes beginners find it hard to control the paint on wet paper because it might be too wet when they put it on there. On there. On there. Yep. This might not suit your style of painting, but when you're wanting to paint detail and you might be having con trouble, con trouble. If you're having con trouble, try it. That might help. Yep. And I painted like that until I finished the painting. I spread the pigment out on the dry palette and then I used my damp brush to pick up the paint. Damp, not damn brush. I said damp. I did say damp. Feeling. He's got drugs.
It's got drugs. It's got air. You can breathe. Okay. Lift your arm up if you can. Yeah, it'll be good. Thank you. Nice to. How do you feel? Yeah. Meh.